If you've got an AMD processor, or are just thinking about buying one, you might be a little confused by all the intricacies of Team Red specific overclocking. And yes, I know that there are options for one-click, quick and dirty overclocking, but there are some Ryzen specific idiosyncrasies that are super helpful to know about. Today, we're going to be talking about Precision Boost Overdrive, or PBO, my favorite type of sandwich. Specifically, we're talking about PBO2, the version on modern Ryzen 5000 and 7000 chips, but we're just gonna refer to it as PBO from here on out. Is that okay? Although it's often thought of as another one-click overclocking solution, it turns out that PBO doesn't directly overclock your CPU, which has been a source of confusion. What PBO actually does is send more power to the processor, which allows the CPU to sustain higher clock speeds for longer periods of time. So if you turn PBO on, but leave the rest of your settings on defaults, you'll see the CPU spend more time hitting whatever the boost speed is on the spec sheet. Simple enough, but here's a recommendation for you. The best way to ensure you do in fact have PBO turned on is to go into your BIOS and specifically look for the AMD overclocking section. Additionally, although you can enable PBO through Ryzen Master in Windows, Ryzen Master can turn it back off upon reboot depending on how it's configured. So yeah, just enable it through the actual AMD settings in your BIOS and save yourself some headaches. So once you've got it turned on, another optional but cool thing you can try is undervolting the chip through PBO. Although this sounds counterintuitive as the point of PBO is to give the CPU more power, many Ryzen CPUs can actually achieve the same level of performance with less power, also meaning less noise and heat and money. Yeah. This could be especially useful for the new 7000 series, which runs hotter and consumes more power than the 5000 series. So if you wanna undervolt, just set the curve optimizer to negative and enter a value between one and 30 in the magnitude field. The larger the number, the greater the undervolt, but you won't wanna go too aggressive or your system will become unstable. Try some different values to see which works best with your specific chip and hopefully your PC doesn't disintegrate. <laughs> So you know how to use PBO, but how do you combine it with an actual overclock to maximize your performance? We'll tell you right after we thank FreshBooks for sponsoring today's video. Whether you own a business or do freelance work, FreshBooks is designed to make accounting and invoicing easier for you. With the ability to integrate with over 100 different apps, there's always a simple way for you to connect with your team and clients. It's easy to start, and their award-winning support staff is always there to help. Take out some of the unnecessary stress in your life and start your first 30 days free with no credit card required. Go to freshbooks.com slash techquickie. Actually turning your clock speeds up with PBO isn't too hard. Although you can just select the auto overclocking option in Ryzen Master in Windows and call it a day, you can get better results in the BIOS with minimal effort. In that same AMD overclocking section in your BIOS that we mentioned earlier, look for a setting that says something like boost clock override. From there, you can enter in a value in megahertz that represents how far past the maximum boost clock listed on the box you want to push your processor. Starting small and adjusting in roughly 25 megahertz increments is a good way to find a stable speed that maximizes performance without pushing the system too hard. Now this might not sound super different from traditional overclocking, but doing it through PBO is actually a bit safer since you're raising power limits without manually overvolting, meaning that there's no risk of frying your poor CPU. Why do you torture it? Not to mention that PBO actually uses a smart algorithm that'll keep you from completely throwing caution to the wind. Of course, you'll still want to appropriately stress test your system to make sure your PBO overclock is stable and your computer won't crash while gaming, watching the final of The Bachelor, or in the middle of a crucial job interview. Unless you're applying for a job here at LMG, in which case I can assure you, we'll have tons of sympathy for a failed overclock. Ooh. We might even give you bonus points. Hey, thanks for watching the whole video. Like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. Check out our other videos, comment below with video suggestions, and don't forget to subscribe and follow TechWiki! You know?